we're heading into another school year. How do you feel as far as uh, preparation and as far as the, the district's operations? We feel wonderful about uh, getting ready for a new school year. We're excited about our students coming back for the 22-23 school year. Uh, it's been a tough two and a half years, but we believe that this year, uh, just like any other year, our school-based administrators, our teachers, support staff, from the district down to the classroom, we're all ready. And let's let's talk about the sort of the main uh, crisis, if we can call it that, uh, that the district's facing. Um, uh, you know, obviously there's a deficit of, of teachers, of, uh, of support staff. Mm -hmm. um, you've talked about some strategies that the district's going to employ. Uh, you know, in the meantime, uh, can you kind of explain those? Mm -hmm. What what should parents know about? You know. There's so many missing, uh, so many unfilled right. positions. Uh, what should parents know about how the district's handling that? Yes, patience needs to be the key word. I think two years ago, pivot was our new word. Well, this year will be patience. Uh, we know that many of the students who had not been in school for the last two and a half years are actually coming back to traditional brick and mortar facilities. And yes, we have a teacher shortage. And some of the strategies that we're implementing is that we added one or two students to the core classrooms to ensure that our students are being taught by a highly qualified teacher and that we as a district put in this all hands in philosophy. So we district administrators will be substituting either on a Monday or Friday. Uh, school based support staff will also be in the classroom. District uh, program specialists will be in the classroom either Tuesday through Thursday to support our schools. This is not about uh, a, a photo op moment. It's not about being on television. It's about ensuring that our students have a teacher. And our teachers are so important. Uh, the qualifications to be a teacher is very high. And we are encouraging individuals, if you have a bachelor's degree, that we can help you become certified to, to be a classroom teacher. But we also are having vacancies in support staff for media specialists, guidance counselors, uh, paraprofessionals. We have vacancies from the district to the classroom, and all of these positions are vitally important to ensure that we have a high-functioning school district. Without the this, let's say because uh, the millage rate increase is, is a is a big step if voters reject that what's the strategy as far as moving forward from there uh, because obviously the changing classroom ratios and you know working people outside m maybe what they were hired for those don't seem like those seem like the temporary mm -hmm. you know fixes that a school district can do in the meantime uh, is there a longer term strategy if the millage rate is possibly reject it. Well, the referendum is really about support for our teachers who are in the classroom. Uh, the referendum will not bring new teachers, but it will continue to show our teachers, especially our veteran teachers, how much we appreciate them and the importance of them staying in the profession. The long-term strategy is working with our local colleges uh, because the colleges are not producing as many uh, educators as they have in the past. Uh, when I was a principal, I would have a list of people to interview uh, more than what I needed. But today, that list is very short. And many people who are actually coming into the world of education do not have degrees in education. So as a school district, we have to support them through alternative certification. Uh, we have programs in our high schools that are uh, teacher academies that we're trying to encourage students to go into the career of education. So this long-term strategy is, is definitely going to be a challenge for the school district, but in the interim, we need to support our teachers. We need to show them that they are valued. And this is why the board uh, signed that resolution, developed a resolution to go forward to the voters uh, to vote starting today 
uh, through August 23rd of whether that referendum is going to be a, sort of a catalyst to show our teachers that the, the jobs that they are holding are very important and they are valued by this community. Uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the job of a teacher because it seems like more and more that involves more things, that it's, it's it, it, the teacher has to consider more and more. And I wanted to talk about the political environment that we've entered where there's been, you know, I won't mention them by name, but there's been pieces of legislation that have affected how a teacher's going to do their job in the classroom. Uh, how do you, you know, obviously your position is sort of apolitical because you just administrate, or, administrate policy, you don't necessarily, you know, craft it. How, how has the political environment shaped how you do your job and how schools operate these days. Is it different than maybe when you started? Oh, it absolutely is different than when I was a teacher in the classroom. It, it's, it's very challenging and it's very different. And this is why I'm so amazed at our educators and those that have been in the classroom now 20, over 20 years, they've seen the different political landscapes come and go but they remain committed to teaching students. That is our number one mission, our focus, is educating our students so that when they matriculate through Duval County Public Schools and they walk across that stage with their high school diploma, they have options about what they want to do for the rest of their lives. They can choose to go to post-secondary, whether that's university or, or technical college. They can choose to go in the military or for many of our students, they can just choose to go into the world of work because of what we have done in Duval County to support them and ensure that they are ready for that next level uh, of their life. And so again, it comes back to that resolution of putting the referendum on the, on the ballot for our educators because they have been on the front lines. They are the ones who are in, in those classrooms each and every day facing the challenges of students that have issues, whether it's from home, their environments, they bring it to the classroom, and our teachers are the ones who are standing there along with their administrators ensuring that students are safe, that they can learn high quality content, and that they are prepared to go to the next level. It's an incredibly difficult job, and I don't think people quite understand everything every part of it they think you know I think maybe in some people's minds it's just show up and teach history it's not like that hard you know uh, is there is there a part of the profession that people don't see that they should oh there's many parts of the profession that people don't see they they don't see that teachers are there to um, counsel students they don't see that teachers are there to uh, handle discipline uh, there are many challenges that our students have in their lives and they br it doesn't stop at the schoolhouse door. Those challenges come into the classroom. Our teachers face many challenges for in their own personal lives and it doesn't stop at the uh, schoolhouse door. And so to have these interactions with challenges requires someone who has a, a high level of patience who are who's highly engaged who knows their content can impart that content can help students uh, understand when they might not want to understand at that moment so there are many things that our teachers are incredibly um, patient and talented with working with students and what I want the community to understand is that they have a group of individuals that show up Monday through Friday. They do work on the weekends. They do work at night to ensure that they are prepared for their students each and every day. And speaking of patience, and you kind of mentioned that this is the beginning. If you had a message that you wanted to get out to parents, a request, a sort of a marching orders, mm -hmm. if you will, for this year, what what would you want parents to to uh, do to think about this year in particular? This year I want parents to be engaged. Our schools are open so they can come volunteer. Uh, when they have orientation, please show up. Work with your child's teacher. Let's 
get back to that team Duval uh, we're all in this together uh, this is the first year in the last few years that you know everything is open for our families to be engaged our schools are they're ready our administrators are welcoming teachers in today our teachers are spending this week getting ready for the students and I want them to know that we are here that we are team Duval and that school is ready to start and we're ready for them to come back to school. Uh, the other thing about uh, getting ready is transportation. Many of our students uh, either take our transportation and for the second year in a row the pilot JTA program will be available for secondary students to take public transportation free of charge. Uh, be, again, patience know that they are also experiencing a shortage of drivers and that uh, route times may be uh, longer these first few weeks of school, but please register on the website if you haven't done so. It's kind of like the many hands make light work. Like if, if you know, pa parents and families can sort of help make up for the, the deficit in teachers, like just while, until like, those positions can be, get filled, that would be, uh, I guess, beneficial. And, and um, I, I wanted to touch really quick on uh, that, that shortage of, of drivers, because that's obviously another challenge. Um, how are you going to be working with the, the bus contractors to sort of, um, I guess, in, incentivize more hiring? Is, is that something that the district has a position to be able to do, or is that more on the bus companies? Well, it's more on the bus companies, but we've been sharing the information. It's on our website. Uh, at the last board meeting, I shared with the community, if you're interested in being a bus driver, please, uh, you know, look at the website. You know, it'll tell you how to register, how to uh, get an employment with them. You can see their commercials. They're out there online. Uh, yes, it is the responsibility of our bus contractors, but as a school district, our goal is to ensure that they're successful because when they're successful, we are successful. Uh, let, let's talk, I want to uh, jump back on some uh, recent legislation is making some parents worry. Obviously, there was a lawsuit filed against the school board of, of Duval. Uh, there's some nervousness that parents of particularly of LGBTQ students don't quite know what they're walking into in a new environment where it's more litigious. There's a, you know, there's that new law that's just sort of hovering over. People are saying that it's chilling free speech, that it's um, creating uh, a discriminatory environment. And there are some superintendents around the, the state that are issuing reassurances that, hey, this is still a safe space for LGBTQ students. What message would you have for, for families in this new environment uh, under HB uh, 1557. Um, is there a message that you have to parents mm -hmm. that DCPS still is a supportive environment? Duval County Public Schools is still a very supportive environment for all students. For our LGBTQ students, they need not worry about coming back to school. We are still um, supporting students, no matter what issues or challenges they may be dealing with. Mental health has become a huge part of what has been added to our coffers of strategies. And, and LGBT students don't necessarily need that support. They just need to know that they have caring adults at their school that will treat them with respect. And when they need help, that they know there are individuals that can uh, support them. But that is for every single student. Uh, the law is simply about parent notification, and we will follow the law, but we will also ensure that every single student that steps on our campus, that they know that they have people who care about them, that can support them, and that we can support their families as well. The, the DCPS is no less safe of a school district than it was before this law. DCPS is no less safe of the school district before the law and now after the law, we will continue to create those safe environments for all students. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about privatization. There's been a lot of talk about that, uh, about moving public schools to uh, more privatized models. 
There's been more and more charter schools approved. Uh, there's you know more and more uh, rhetoric about you know specifically against public education. Uh, and then there's been recent comments about eliminating the Department of Education on the federal level. Uh, you're, you've been in education for years and years and years. I, I'd just like to really hear your thoughts about it as, as the leader of one of the biggest districts in the state. Yes, as the sixth largest school district in the state of Florida and the 20th largest in the nation, my number one focus is on students who are attending public schools. We uh, saw a record number of students returning back last year, and we continue to see those numbers improve this school year. Uh, parents have a right to choose. They can choose traditional public schools, charter schools, or private schools, or they can choose to homeschool. My goal is to ensure if you choose Duval County Public Schools that you've made the right choice, that our schools are of high quality. Even with a teacher shortage, last school year, we maintain our B rating. We reduced all of our schools and turnaround to zero. We have no schools in school turnaround. That is because of people believing in the mission. That is because our teachers showed up each and every day ready to educate students. That is because of the leadership of the school board from the boardroom down to the classroom Everyone has engaged in this notion that we can be an A-rated school district, that we can deliver high quality education so that parents uh, have a wealth of choices in front of them. And when they make that choice, if they join Team Duval, their child is going to get a great education. And, I want, and that leads me right into my next question about uh, achievement. Um, uh, there was, I, I spoke to some of the school board uh, candidates and they said that one thing they really want to focus on is increasing uh, literacy in the, in the middle elementary, upper elementary grades. Um, just speaking as, uh, you know, someone who oversees these goalposts, uh, what, are you, what are your goals for, for this year as far as uh, increasing, obviously we saw like the pandemic loss, like the mm -hmm. learning loss. Um, how are you going to work to address uh, that on, on a large scale? Well, we're excited that this school year we're implementing new curriculum uh, in the area of English language arts. We are uh, seeing students starting again to come back and pick up um, not where they left off in 1819 pre-pandemic because some of our younger students for the last two and a half years have not been in a brick and mortar school and that can definitely impact their, their learning. And so we are excited with our partnership with whether it's Read USA, Mainstream, uh, bringing in retired teachers to help tutor students in the area of literacy, uh, our work with KHA and JPEF uh, on, on campaign for grade level reading, uh, improving proficiency at third grade. Uh, it does take time. Reading is not just something naturally that students just pick up. It requires uh, professional development for our teachers. Our teachers really engage in ensuring that these students are seeing a high quality teacher year after year. That's how the vacancies can impact uh, literacy because if a student has had a, a substitute for uh, more than a year, it truly can um, have an adverse effect on their literacy gains. And, and then it snowballs, doesn't it? Yes. Like if, if it's interrupted at one point, uh, a subject like reading or like mathematics, that it sort of affects from then on is the way I understand. Yeah, it does have a snowball effect, but what we have done as a school district uh, with programs such as Bridge to Success, we've really found ways to try to slow down that snowball and in some instances actually just completely break it up and students continue to move forward. Uh, when you look at our graduation rate, Many students have struggled in their primary years, but the district has been able to find ways to support those students as they matriculate through, through the school district. But again, our goal is that we're going to uh, attack this area and ensure that students are going to be proficient and literate. And, and one, it just removes that roadblock to um, 
further difficulties and as they matriculate through the school district. If you'll allow me, I want to read uh, something and just have you react to it. This is a, um, a statement that was made uh, on a local organization's advocacy for a school board candidate. I'm not going to say which school board candidate, but I want to read you this and I want you to, to react to it. It says, children are losing their innocence. It says, drag queens, sexualized content, and pornography have become commonplace in our education system. Can you react to that? Is, is it commonplace? No. That is a simple reaction. No, that is not what is happening in our schools. Can you speak a little bit more about that type of rhetoric? Because we've heard it many times in school board meetings and in protests that there's some sort of effort uh, or there's materials in, in, in school libraries that's pornographic or that is sexualizing children. Can you speak about that rhetoric? You, you obviously said it's just that, it's just rhetoric, but, but uh, can you speak about the effect that that type of language has when it's you know, said in public in a school board meeting? Well, that's why we have a process. If anyone wants to challenge any books in our media centers, uh, there's a process for challenging those books. To date, we've not had any challenges uh, of significance, um, but that was there prior to those comments being made of if parents felt like there was something, uh, a particular book in our media centers that they felt should not be there, there was a process for challenging it. Uh, there's a process now of, of, of us sharing our health curriculum that has to be done yearly. And if individuals find that there's something in our health curriculum that they feel like it's not appropriate, they have a, 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 a vehicle by which to make that complaint. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'll also dive into another source of headaches that you've had over the past couple of years, and that is COVID. Obviously, now we have a uh, new COVID policy that sort of restricts what school districts can do in response. Um, and we're also seeing uh, a, a monkeypox, we're seeing new uh, coronavirus strains and cases picking up. Uh, is there any conversation being had in the district as far as, well, what's the strategy now uh, to respond to something like that? Mm -hmm. And I understand like there was new policy that was sort of revamped recently. Yes, our COVID policies are remaining in place in that one, we still are providing um, uh, all of the materials that schools may need for cleaning, ensuring that we're keeping our schools uh, AVAC systems caught up to date with the MERV 13 filters. Um, those things have not changed. Uh, the only thing that has changed is that now students can, if, they're, if they feel like they need a COVID test, their parents can request one from the schools. Uh, so we do have, still have those COVID uh, take home tests available for families. What's changed is we're no longer doing tracking with the Department of Health and we will no longer have the dashboard. Those were in conjunction with the Department of Health and since the Department of Health is keeping uh, that data now families will need to go to the Department of Health to get that data. But we still are maintaining uh, our schools to be clean and to encourage students to follow those safety protocols uh, when you don't have to be right next to the stand a few feet apart. Uh, but our schools are open. Parents are encouraged to, as I said, come and volunteer. If you used to volunteer in the past, uh, open houses, you're going to be able to come into the schools to, to meet your child's teacher. We are moving forward with this school year, understanding that, you know, the pandemic is not gone, but we're trying to help our families get back to that sense of normalcy uh, as it relates to the collaboration from the family to the school. And, and just finally, uh, it sounds like really uh, one of the big messages that you have for families is this year, get involved, help, like be, be um, uh, engaged is what you say. Absolutely, engagement and patience are my two new words for this school year. Uh, really wanting our schools to know, our school families to know that uh, the schools are here, we're here to support you, 
uh, children, I think they are ready to come back and we are ready to receive them.